Good evening, I'm Arnold Miyazaki, and welcome to the 13th session of Focus um, Ag 194C, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture 194 is a one credit course offered to you by your College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, University of Hawaii at Hilo. <coughs> this class comes to you live each Thursday evening at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m from the television studio located at Mohikini Library on the University of Hawaii Hilo campus by way of HITS and your local cable, <coughs> cable community service channel. The objective of this class is to inform you of the various aspects of diversified agriculture. This semester we are focusing on <coughs> cooking various dishes emphasizing local agriculture commodities. Since we are coming to you live this evening at approximately 8 p.m. we will begin our question and answer period where you the viewing audience and those of you, you in the studio will have an opportunity to ask questions to our guest speakers. Our uh, outer island viewers on Oahu and, and Kauai may call Kolak. I hope you don't change the channel and stay, on, stay tuned to Ag 194C, Focus on Agriculture. We, we have a very exciting class and this evening we are featuring myself and my wife uh, Domi and we are preparing some Bolivian dishes. Okay, um, <coughs> I guess um, I, we, we came on various times uh, on focus on agriculture and, um, and we presented some Bolivian dishes so we'll, we'll continue doing this, uh, um, presenting different uh, other Bolivian dishes. Um, first of all, uh, just to review, uh, <coughs> Uh, I lived in Bolivia for uh, about 20 years, went down there as a Peace Corps volunteer and stayed there and uh, did uh, farming down there. And that's where I met my wife. And um, Bolivia is in South America. It's in the um, center of South America. They, they say it's the heart of South America. And it's a landlocked country. And it's similar to Hawaii. It's, um, it has a tropical region. It has, um, high altitude region like Mauna Kea, and also the temperate region like uh, Waimea. So it's very, um, very similar to Hawaii. So some of the dishes we are preparing are, you know, from different regions of, of Bolivia. So I um, hope, hope you uh, enjoy this um, class. Um, the first uh, dish we're gonna present is um, umintas. Umintas is like, um, cornbread. The only thing, instead of using just the corn flour, we'll use the fresh um, sweet corn and, um, and, and use, it, uh, use the fresh sweet corn. And uh, I'll go over there and, uh, with where my wife is. Um, <coughs> in order to do this, uh, what you do is you uh, take the husk out of the corn and, um, and with a knife you just take the corn out from the cob and um, put in a bowl all the corn and then um, she, what she did was she, she, she um, added, what, what did you add? I add cheese, um, butter, uh, salt, a uh, little sugar to make more. Okay. Did you add any flour or corn flour? Oh, uh, yes. I added corn flour to, to make more thick. Yeah, what you want is uh, when you make um, umintas, you want the sweet corn that's just about um, getting a little bit hotter. You don't want that um, uh, soft, sweet the corn um, because it's, it's going to be too liquid. Mm -hmm. But if it's uh, getting like hard already, uh, that's the best time to uh, use it. So, you know, whenever you have sweet corn and you say, oh, I, I can't eat it anymore, you can make um, uh, umintas. And if it's too dry, you can always add milk to it. And uh, that'll even things out. Um, so there, and there's various ways of um, preparing uh, umintas. And um, one way is um, um, putting it in the oven. And um, what you do is you use um, the the husk of the the um, the, s the corn, and um, you put the the, the batter or the mix in, uh, on top of the um, 
the husk and then you um, fold it like a triangle shape and this is what you have. Instead of using like tea leaf, you use the corn husk. But <coughs> to use it, you have to have the whole husk. When over here, when you buy it, it cuts, they cut it off. We we're lucky because um, the loafer farms that sell sweet corn, um, they, they donated two bags for us and uh, that's why we could get the husk because uh, I try to get it at um, some stores that they, have, they sell dry husk, but uh, there aren't any available right now. Yeah, we use it, uh, corn over here because of this over here in Hawaii. We don't have some, like in Bolivia, it's different than the fresh corn. Yeah, yeah the sweat, uh, I think the fresh corn over there is a little bit um, not as sweet, no? And it's firmer, yeah, I think. It, it's more firm and bigger. It is. And uh, we always uh, like. Um, in the countryside, they always, like I mentioned before, you do a lot of intercropping. You plant your rice, then between the rice, ro uh, rice you have rows of corn, and then you also have bananas. So after you harvest your corn, your, your, your uh, rice, then you, the banana comes up. And so, you know, um, you always have food. Um, also, the better you, you can... Um, wrap it another way and you can steam it, right? Yeah. And uh, show, show the one that we steamed. Actually, you can steam it or you can, um, uh, how do you say it, uh, just put it in a boiling water. So you wrap it up like this. And actually, if you, were, you have it bigger, you would, uh, well actually, you can have it bigger than this, about two times the size. And then you we wrap, make big, yeah. Yeah, wrap it around. Small. <laughs> <laughs> the, the husk, the leaves are smaller. Yes. And then you can wrap it with uh, the, the, uh, the same leaf itself so it doesn't come all apart. And that's another way of cooking this thing. That is very popular in Bolivia too, you know. They eat a lot for New Year's too. Yeah. Um, and uh, the last way of doing it is no. by... Um, we have this one in mold. Oh, so we have in yeah, the you can oven. you can put it in the oven like this too. Mm. Just put the whole thing, and that's faster to cook instead of individually. Mm. So she did it this way too. And uh, the last way is um, she's gonna fry it, just like pancakes. Uh, you have to help me this one. Which one gonna go? Which one go? Which one is it? This one is better, huh? Here you can make a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. What is the noise? What we do is just uh, frying the, the, oh. the mix. You're gonna make like uh, pancakes. We use butter before to heat. Then we drop the what is the masa? The batter. The batter. Yeah. And um, we had a dairy farm, so over there we used to um, use a lot of butter for our cooking. And we used to make the butter, and it's easy to make butter. All you do is um, you milk the cow, and then you put it in a big pot and you let it settle. And when it's cooled, the, all that um, the cream comes to the top. So you just scrape the cream off, and you just put it in a bottle. And once you have enough, all you do is shake it, shake the bottle constantly. You might have to shake it for an hour, but then all the the fat comes together and comes a solid mass. And once you have that solid mass, all what you do is you, um, you just rinse, rinse it with cold water. 
several times until it's clear. And uh, after that, you just add salt and that's your butter. And that's, this is very delicious. Um, while she's doing that, uh, <coughs> the next dish we're going to do is real simple. I'm doing it the easy way. Um, I'm going to, this is a can of um, condensed milk. We can't advertise, huh? So I've got to take it off. And uh, all I'm going to do is put in the boiling water. That's it. And you have to boil it for about an hour or so. And um, Two hours. <coughs> get the <coughs> you boil it, boil it, and then um, um, then it, after an hour or so, you you open that can. I don't know if you can see that from the overhead camera. It comes like caramel. This is what it turns like. I'll just put it over here so they can take a look at it. That's the easiest way to do it. It's called dulce de leche. Yeah, it's called dulce de leche. If it, in, in English you translate it as sweet, sweet milk. Leche is uh, milk. milk and dulce is sweet. Uh, we used to do a lot of that. Um, instead of doing that, we used to do it the hard way because we had a dairy. And uh, sometimes we had a lot of milk and uh, we decided, well, we, let's make dulce de leche. And uh, all you do is put all the milk in a big pot. And just heat the pot up, let it boil. But the, <coughs> the thing is, you have to boil it for hours, and you have to always constantly stir it. Stir it a lot, because if you don't stir it, you have it burnt on the bottom of the pot. So you're constantly moving that uh, milk. And um, after some, uh, I don't know, a couple hours or so, the milk is going to turn kind of brownish color. And <coughs> when it turns brownish, you add your sugar, and keep on turning it. But it won't get hard, so what you have to do is you have to add certain kind of flour to it. And we should just um, make what, rice? Rice, yeah. And we should crush the rice or Crown make it like a powder, flour. Yeah. And just put it inside a, a milk. And it will become solid. And it will be exactly like that. But uh, there's a story for this too, because when I was a Peace Corps volunteer, uh, um, we wanted to see that. There was an experiment station uh, that was several miles from our, where I was staying. And, uh, and there was a female vet. She wanted to uh, know the experiment station. So we went, went walking and, and we got lost, I guess, because there weren't any trail. <coughs> so we were in a, like a thick jungle. And then finally we, got a, we found a river. and. Uh, we, I knew that across the river was, was the current station. So finally we, we, we got across the river and then we had to refresh ourselves. We were all dirty and at the river. And then after that we uh, introduced ourselves to the, to the person in charge. Over there, the, the, the person of the current station or um, an agriculturist over there, they call it Minero, or like an engineer. And it took me a hard time to get used to it. All the um, agriculturists down there, they, they call it minero, or engineer, and they call it minero agronomo, or like an agronomist. And so he, <coughs> he invited us, uh, it was in the afternoon, so he invited us for, um, uh, like, you know, they drank coffee or tea at that time, with bread, and uh, he had this dulce de leche, and so, we wonder how did he make it? So he explained to us how he made it. So all you do is put in the boiling water, put too many hours, and then you have that dulce de leche. So that's how I learned how to make dulce de leche. And uh, so after we had that, we, we had to cross the bigger river. And we put thing he had a dugout, and like a canoe, and he, he took us across the river, and there was an um, old uh, Catholic mission uh, across the river. So we stayed overnight at the um, Catholic priest um, uh, mission over there. Of course, they, they let us um, stay in separate rooms. Um, but it was very interesting, a very learning experience. And also, my wife just told me about 
her experience about dulce de leche that she didn't tell me before. <laughs> Always uh, spouses have secrets that they don't tell each other. You know. <laughs> but uh, she told me this morning that uh, I said, you know, when did you learn about this uh, dulce de leche? And she said, oh, she wa uh, when she was young, she was at a... Um, private school. Yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. like a private school or and uh, they had a dorm. Over there they call internado. And it's with, you know, all the young girls stayed there. And then the Catholic <coughs> priests over there, they, they, they helped uh, uh, young kids a lot because uh, where she was living, there weren't any high school at that time. So the Catholic priests um, uh, helped with their education. And uh, so she, she mentioned that um, at the internado, they, um, they used to help with the cooking of the um, dishes and all that. So um, some, some of the girls used to get those milk, yeah. can, yeah. cans of condensed milk, but the cans of condensed milk are smaller in Bolivia, half the size. And what they used to do is while, while the uh, nuns were cooking the, the, the soup for uh, dinner, they used to throw a couple of cans inside <laughs> and let it cook. And then before the nuns could of uh, knew about it, they should take it out, and then they had the dulce de leche. So they had they had that, and and that did well with their bread. Yeah, we have a like a French bread over there, but small is crunchy, no? Chicken, cheese, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So um, that's the story about dulce de leche. <coughs> um, this oh, is yeah. the, the um, uminta. Yeah. The it's supposed fried. to be kind of. Emotional, but we'll put this over yeah. here. My wife didn't want to be like a chicken without a head, you know, tonight, so <laughs> she wanted everything prepared. It was hard to do cooking, and uh, tonight we don't have any assistance, so we just have to tell a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next? Oh. Um, Mm. We have la sopa de quinoa. Oh, yeah. W um, it's mainly used in, a, I think, in the highlands <coughs> of um, Bolivia. And this um, dish, quinoa, I don't know if you know about quinoa. It's like a, some people consider it a grain, but it's, it's um, more like a seed, a small white seed. And uh, it's a very nutritious um, um, seed because it has um, protein that, other grain, even other grain doesn't have, it has lysine in it. And um, it's gr it grows in the highlands, highlands you know. Uh, and I think in, uh, in the United States, they have it in uh, around Colorado, I think. But it's a small seed. And then um, what, you <coughs> what she told me about it is that you really got to, before you cook it, you have to really rinse it, you know, several times. Because if you don't rinse it several times, is uh, something, a, a, a coating around the seed that uh, makes it real bitter. So be sure to rinse it several times and then uh, before you cook it. But it doesn't take too long to um, cook it. So what she did was she made a, a soup out of the quinoa. Beef. 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 Yeah. Beef, eh? yeah. So you can uh, tell uh, what you added to the um, soup. Well, first I boiled the beef very well until it became soft. Uh, then I added the uh, quinoa inside. I put the uh, carrot and well uh, potatoes. Then I I refry like the onions, garlics. I like a lot uh, uh, seasoning. Yeah, cumin. It has a uh, uh, thyme, oregano. Uh, what is it called? Onion. Yeah, it's good. It's very delicious, this one. Uh, we can use quinoa in many different things, too. Actually, you can use it as a cereal in the morning. It's good. Yeah, Naturally, it's very healthy. In my country, people use... Some people only plant this one, and you, they can eat three meals a day. Uh, so they can uh, toast and make a refreshment for that too, and then sugar. 
Also, they I can make so. bread, huh? Or yes, uh, cookies. they make bread too. Yeah, they can make it like a flour. Yeah, they do. Uh, <coughs> I was telling my husband, I think so this, this grain is like uh, soya, soyu, soyu? Soybeans. 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 And he, in Hawaii, people use for everything. In my country, people use this one too. Yeah. Um. <coughs> There's an, a story about a missionary that, uh, he was a Methodist missionary, I think. So we'll have this display over here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the Methodist missionary, he was in our area, and uh, one, one day he ate <coughs> this quinoa soup. And um, uh, so the next day, uh, he, he used the restroom. And uh, he thought he had a lot of parasites. Well, actually, it wasn't. It was just a quinoa. Because what happened is that the quinoa, when you cook it, it's like a sprout, you know, bean sprout. It, it develops a tail. So um, it, you can be mistaken for something else. <laughs> so <coughs> that was really funny, because he was all scared that he had a lot of parasites, you know. But actually, it was just, just a quinoa. Yeah, this, this produce in the highland, when I was a child, I didn't like it because uh, people used to make fun. No? Like in Hawaii, people from outside, they make something, things, yeah? They used to say, oh, that is not for us, it is for the birds, no? <laughs> they can eat the birds, not us. But we realized that we have to eat, it's good, no? For the health, it's very nutritious. Now we're going to make that. So what's the next one? Oh, chicharron. Oh. Yeah, I guess you, you, you know this because you, they have it in a supermarket, but this is a different type of, uh, my, my wife made it, uh, chicharron, chicharron. Over here, if you buy chicharron, it's, uh, it's in a bag, like potato chips, and it's uh, just uh, the skin of the, the, the pig, I guess. But uh, in Bolivia, this, <laughs> they put um, seasoning in it, and also they um, um, they have meat, not only the fat. So it's very tasty. And the type that she prepared, I think, is um, La Paz. In La, yeah, what you have in La Paz. If you go to the like the farmers market or whatever, on, um, they have ladies selling food, and they have like a huge um, walk of um, this chicharron. And usually they have uh, chicharron, they sell you a small plate of chicharron with, um, how what you call it? How many? How many? We call it over there, what What do we call it? Mote. Mote. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you know what how many is. How many is the, the, the corn that you boil? You boil it a long time until it comes soft and it, it, gets, it absorbs the water, so it becomes big. And um, uh, that's what it is. Um, but over there, they used to make uh, the hominy. They didn't buy it from the can. Um, they used to boil the corn, even uh, in our area. They boil the corn. And, um, but you have to um, rinse it huh, with uh, ash. Uh, yes. Yeah, you have to rinse it with ash or, you know, um, yeah, because the corn has a um, the skin, the membrane, the membrane or skin, skin around the corn, so you have to take it out. So you rub it with the ash, and it comes off. Then you rinse the corn again, and then all, all the membrane comes off. So you have to just what you call the moti or the hominy. And uh, to me, at, at, f at first I couldn't, I didn't like it that, that much because I wasn't used to it. But later on, I could uh, eat it, and it does well with certain food like uh, chicharron. And also uh, another dish that we're going to uh, prepare. Yeah, we, we're going to make the hanami, and huh? we cook the hanami. You're going to cook what? The waya. What are you going to do? Oh, esto. This is the hanami. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the hanami that uh, mm -hmm. she's going to prepare some dish with it. I don't oh. know what. No, no, no. It's like that. Oh. We're going to sit with that. OK. Yeah. Just want to. It's okay like that. Oh, she just wanted to show you that you yeah. eat the uh, harmony with this. 
Yeah. Good thing we have harmony because uh, I just found out that there's not too much rice. <laughs> they had just one cup, man. So I don't know how we're going to stretch it. Okay. Okay, what's Another next? plate we have uh, the chunyo. Look for the time. Oh, you're going to do the chunyo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Muy rápido. Uh, in Bolivia, the highlands, they, they produce a lot of um, potatoes, but you cannot, they cannot, they want to preserve the potatoes and they cannot eat the potatoes uh, a lot like that. So uh, their way of preserving the potato is they're going to, um, uh, it's like freeze dry the potato. Um, yeah, potato. Um, they, they put it in a, I guess in, in Bolivia, they don't have, the, the poor people don't have freezer, so. And it's a highland because when I say highland, it's like Mauna Kea, you know, on top of Mauna Kea. Because uh, even La Paz is 10,000 feet elevation. So that's high. And even if you're not used to the altitude and you just arrive on an airplane uh, to La Paz, uh, you have um, altitude sickness. And when you start walking, your legs are going to hurt because you don't have enough oxygen in your legs. And it takes you several days to get used to the altitude. And um, La Paz, luckily, is in a small valley um, below the Altiplano, the plateau. And, but most of the people up there live in a plateau region. And it's, um, to me, it's a very desolate area. Uh, it's very cold, hardly any vegetation, and uh, a lot of wind. It's not a friendly place, and but um, I guess they, they learn how to survive. And one way is to make uh, what they call chunyo or the uh, freeze dry the potato. And what they do is they <coughs> just put in, uh, I guess, the snow. And then um, what's going to happen is I think it breaks out the, the the cells of the potato. And and if you I don't know if you ever frozen um, potatoes. But uh, if you freeze the potato, what's going to happen is that when you take it out and you thaw it out, it'll be like, um, how do you say, you can, it's real soft and, and very, all the water is coming out. So what you do is you got to squeeze it out somehow. So you squeeze out all the water and after that you, um, uh, you dry it in the sun. Over here, if you want to make it, you have to uh, probably take it up. Manakia or someplace high, so you know you don't have the bugs, but and uh, freeze dry it. But once you dry it, it's like rock, you know, it's like rock, and it will last in the tropics without nothing, you know. And so when you want to cook it again, you have to um, uh, soak it uh, overnight, and then you can cook it. But uh, well, um, how do you say the texture is not like potato anymore. It's more rubbery, and it's dark and grayish, blackish color. Uh, it's not white anymore. But what we did was uh, we didn't go through the process of uh, drying it. We just froze it and tried to squeeze the water out. And then this is what we had uh, have yeah. in a plastic bag. It's kind of grayish color, but it still has the, when you eat it, it still has the texture of um, semi-potato. It's not like uh, chunyo. So what she's going to do is she's going to make a plate of uh, what? Oh, chuño rebozado. Uh, we don't know what is rebozado. <laughs> 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 but in Bolivia, we have uh, over 200 different varieties of potatoes, yeah? We can choose whatever we you need, like uh, what <coughs> is good for the pork or beef or soup, or you make your uh another dishes yeah so we choose this one i like the red one is good yeah. here in here. so i guess you're gonna mix uh, uh make a dish out of this chunyu yeah. took me a long time to get uh, used to that uh, chunyu but like i said before certain dishes go well with uh, the chunyu so um and uh, if you live long enough uh down there and uh Eat enough to you, you're gonna like it. So what what are you cooking now? I, I'm gonna make this one with eggs and prepare this one. 
yeah. chuño reposado we call this one with uh, onions I fry in so onions. you're frying onions now yes one. I fry in onions with seasoning and what seasoning you put in I put cumin cumin yeah cumin. okay Did you put so any salt yeah I need to put salt yes but then where is salt Let me find it. Uh, no sé. No importa. Oh, ahí está. No hay. ¿Qué es la bolsa? ¿Sí? 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 ¿La bolsita de nada? No. Ok. Un poco de sal. ¿Y qué más vas a agregar? Uh, I put eggs then. You got the eggs already? Give me two eggs. Yes, okay. It's like a, what do you call it? Um, omelette, yeah? It's not like that, it's more. No? No, it's a Okay, uh... You got it. Can I talk about the other one? Domi? Oh, oh, yeah? Okay, yeah. while she's cooking that, I'll talk about the, um, another Bolivian dish. Um, what is this called? Fricasse. Oh. <laughs> this is called, uh, fricasse. It's a soup. Uh, uh, with hominy and um, pork and uh, to me I found this very delicious especially when the first time I ate it so, and in La Paz they have um, small restaurants small restaurants they, they call they don't call restaurants over there they call pensiones and um, and my uh, one of my former partners he, he introduced me to this small restaurant of pension and the only thing they served was Sausage with bread, you know, Bolivian sausage with bread or um, this soup. And I always used to go to that restaurant whenever I'm in La Paz to eat this soup. So I found it very delicious. And uh, this is made just with hominy and uh, pork and uh, what? It has garlic, a lot of garlic, a lot of cumin, and it has a Does it make chili. It? chili. It's hot. The big one, yeah. yeah it's but very this one is not hot. Oh, you I didn't make it hot. It's not too hot, yeah. Well, I guess you didn't make it hot because um, people are not used to it. <laughs> the flavor <laughs> is hot. good for the chili. I like it. It's special for that dish. Shall I put it out? Oh, yeah. you have a plate. Yeah, look at that thing. You're running. Mm. Oh, we can put in the plate. No, that's okay. Yeah, okay. Gracias. So this is uh, called, um, what is it? I forgot really. <laughs> Fricasse. 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 Okay. This, this um, dish with uh, eggs and onions, uh, you can uh, it can go with anything you can eat with yeah. meat good thing she made yeah. this because we don't have too much rice <laughs> <laughs> so we can at least we have harmony and uh, this uh, chunyu no el último es el pollo mira la hora yeah um the right now we're gonna do uh what what do you call it sakta sakta de pollo yeah yeah we call it it's mainly a dish in the highlands called sakta de pollo and uh, it's chicken pollo is chicken P O L L O if you know, uh, if you know Spanish and uh, this what did you add in this dish oh I added many things here. <laughs> <laughs> First, I boil the chicken and you in a pot. Did you boil the whole chicken? The whole chicken, then 
Unless I like to put, uh, when I cook in the chicken, put garlic, onion, and cilantro to get a good flavor. Also, the stock you can use it for another, cook another things, yeah? You can take the, out the meat and eat that one too. Okay, I put, uh, then I, I use uh, onion, garlic, a lot of cumin. Also, I use the chili. These are the long ones, big ones. We it's can a buy long red one. Huh? Red one. Usually we use in Bolivia the yellow one, but we have not over here. I use the red one. <coughs> then I. How do you use the red one? Because it's dried, eh? Oh, the r yeah, that is dry. dry that's right. So what do you do? You oh, chop I it up or? No, I take out the well. I I divide in two. I take I open. I take out the seed and the beans. It's important. You don't want feel hot. Take out the beans, the seed. Use gloves, yeah. And then put in the pot in the to boil with mm. salt, yeah. And the first boil, throw away the water, and then put another water and boil it. Then you can put in the blender. No, in the what is the not blender? Uh -oh. Food processor. Without the seasoning like uh, cumin, uh, what is that? Pimienta, pepper, pepper garlic, everything in the food, food processor. Yeah. yeah. Then you can uh, another part. You can uh, chop uh, onions, plenty onions, uh, carrots. Put on the onion fry in the in the pan, then you added the seasoning, all the seasoning you added. Keep frying, then you added the stock over there to cook the, uh, what's that, the carrot and the peas. When it's done, you can add it to the chicken, to the peas chicken. It is delicious too. So you eat, uh, when you eat, eat uh, serve this plate of sakta, you, you serve the, the chicken with the um, chunya. Yes, with chuño, uh, potatoes, uh, rice too, they use rice, rice. yeah. Also, there's, there have, always have to have the sal salad, little different salad, like uh, this one. We have tomatoes. Um, in Bolivia, people use a lot of uh, parsley for everything, they like green. I prepare this this one uh, is I marinate the onion, red onion with lemon, garlic, salt and olive oil. So this one I will mix this one and put in the plate in the dish. So you you, you have the chuño in the plate with the uh, the, ch the chicken. chicken plus the salad. Yes. And this is a complete meal. It is, right? yes. Okay, why don't you put, uh, mix it and we will have a plate out there. All this? Yeah. Okay. And in the meantime, I'll put this out. <coughs> I don't think too many people are watching tonight because uh, we're competing with Mary Monarch. Plus, um, what? American Idol. <laughs> so, um, I don't think they will be watching us because we don't sing, we don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we want to share what we know. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of food, and um, so if the folks that um, just tuned in, um, this is um, Ag 194C, focus on agriculture, and uh, a one credit course, and um, we're doing um, Bolivian cooking tonight. So um, I hope you learn about some dishes that we, we're making right now. Okay. And uh, I guess we have just the juice, huh? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, with all that food, I think we need something to drink, right? This is not, it's a non-alcoholic beverage, so don't worry. Can anybody in this audience uh, tell me what you think this drink is? 
Take a guess. No, it's made from a fruit. Plum. No. Grape. No. Apple. No. Cherry. No. Grows in the tropics. Grows in Hawaii. Pineapple. No. 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 It you has never a lot of potassium. It's a fruit. No. What color is it? Oh, you'll guess it if I tell you the color. <laughs> the, 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 the color of the fruit is not the color of this. Banana. Banana. Yeah. Banana. The price. <laughs> yeah, this is banana. Pure banana. Well, we added water because we had to boil it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in um, in Bolivia, um, everybody plants banana, cooking banana, um, bananas to eat. And we got so much bananas down there that it's you know you either feed it to the animals or you, it's just gonna spoil. And even over here, you know, one if a person has just one big head of banana, he can't consume everything, and you cannot make a lot of banana muffins. And if you don't have animals, what are you going to do with it? So what you can do is you can make a drink out of it. And this probably you can freeze it. So yeah. the <laughs> what you do is you get the real ripe banana. You know, bananas that's ready to brown or beginning to brown. That's the ideal type. And what you do is you just um, take out the skin and just chop it up and put it in a big pot. And you get a lot of banana, put it in a pot and um, fill it up with water, just boil it. And the water is going to turn purple. And, and once it turns dark purple, you know that it's, it's ready. So all you do is strain the, the, the banana, banana juice and uh, you have this banana drink. And it's very sweet, real sweet. And my, my wife didn't want me to talk about it or you don't want to present it, but I why don't we do it? Because there's something coming, and <laughs> I know people over here don't know about it. No? They don't. And the, uh, a lot of things. They have Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, you know. Um, over here, you can just go down and buy your soft drinks, and, uh, and it's easy. But over there, we didn't have those uh, soft drinks, especially way out in a forest or a you know, farm, you know. So we had to try to do, make our drinks and this is one drink that we always did uh, even uh, we didn't even have refrigeration so we just drank as much as we can and then and even the next day or you know it's still starting to ferment already but still good <laughs> so uh, this is one drink that uh, you should try it's very sweet and um, also banana you can make a uh, vinegar yeah, out of that all you do is um, put in a what, some sort of sh a strainer where all the uh, banana juice um, collects, and then you um, after you have so much a bottle full, then you just boil it and then um, not boil yeah. it. So you gotta ferment it first, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you ferment it and then after that you boil it and um, uh, strain it, and that's your vinegar. So it's you don't have to. Good vinegar. You don't have to buy vinegar. Mm. Also, you can do that with uh, if you have enough cacao plants. Yeah, the chocolate. Yeah, when last time when I went to Bolivia, they're exporting to e Europe vinegar from bananas. They were. Yes. Maybe they're somebody gonna get an idea and make uh, yeah. Hawaii vinegar <laughs> from bananas. <laughs> 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 this is good taste. They like it, so they buy. It's natural. It's not chemical. They don't use chemicals. It's a good thing in my country is poor, but the nature gives all the food is good. Yeah. People looking for that, very good things, yeah. yeah they pay him. Yeah, even the, yeah. Um, the they had, we had a cacao um, co-op where they, um, they marketed the cacao beans. That's where you get the chocolate from. And they got in touch with a, um, a chocolate company in Germany, I think, or someplace in yes. Europe. They wanted organic uh, uh, cacao beans. And uh, they, they um, 
they paid a better price for that cacao beans. So um, sometimes it's worth um, doing it organically and not using too much chemicals. So this is a drink that you should try. Oh, the table coming full. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is another drink. Yeah, this is easy to guess, I guess. Okay. No. 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 Somebody say. Pineapple, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she said pineapple. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a pineapple drink. Um, you can do it with the whole fruit, you know, same way, boil it. But what we did down there is that, you know, we want to use everything. So um, when you eat the pineapple, you have the, uh, the pineapple skin, right? So you have to peel, take it off so you get the pineapple. But what we used to do was that, you know, the skin still have a lot of juice in it. So all we do is the, the skin, we just throw in our boiling water, we just boil it. And then you, the, all the juice is going to come out. Yeah, we used to use any kind of drink we make no, at home. But because we used to, you, we have to boil the water over here. We don't have uh, sanitation water over there. So we have to bring water and boil it and put any flavor, right? Yeah, that's why we use all the things. Um, wha what did you add to this to make it better? Oh, I put in s uh, clove and cinnamon. Yeah. And sugar? No, I no? don't. No. <laughs> I didn't put sugar now. <laughs> we need. So not going to be a sweet, huh? No. Nah. <laughs> you can, you can add sugar to make it real sweet. But the, the banana, you don't have to make it, uh, you don't have to add sugar. Yeah. It's sweet enough. Oh, what are you doing now? Oh, I f finishing the... What the is it? Uminta. Uminta. Yeah. yeah she, she's doing more uh, uminta frying it. And, uh, it's too soft, this. This core, that's why. She made the uh, batter too soft so it doesn't stick together, I guess. It's falling apart. It's falling apart. Suppose not. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's, that's about it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, uh, I guess um, we finished real fast. So, um, we're open for question and answers. Uh, if we don't have any telephone calls, <coughs> you folks have to help. Okay, go right ahead. Did you say you added cinnamon to the drink? Uh, yes. What to drink you're talking about? Um, the banana and the pineapple. Oh, just the pineapple. Okay. Yeah, to Thank the pineapple. You. Yeah. Any other questions? But to the banana, you can add lemon. It's good. Good flavor with lemon. Um, <coughs> for those tuning in, maybe we can uh, review the dishes on the table. Okay. There's a lemon. Okay, uh, there's a caller coming in, so uh, can you tell uh, us your name and where you're know. calling from? Hello, this is Harusho Joe. Oh, hi, Harusho. I've been doing my homework. I read the uh, uh, encyclopedia, the world book. Very good. And, uh, and this is uh, the, the one that you call quinoa or something like that. Quinoa. Quinoa, quinoa. Yeah. The, they call it a grain called quinoa. Right. Do we have the things in Hawaii? Um, the only place you can have, find it, I think, is the natural food store. Yeah, they, you cannot grow them in, the, in, in Hawaii in, in the garden? I don't think so because it's, it's a highland crop. Eh? It's in a colder region, I think. Oh. Like in the United States, they have it in Colorado, I think, in the higher altitude. Oh, okay. So the only place we can find it right now in Hawaii is uh, the store, the natural food store. In the natural food store. Yeah, they should have you it. You tell it as a flour. Ah. Uh, that you can make. You said you can make bread with it, huh? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I don't think. I don't 
I'm not sure if they can sell it as flour, but we, we bought the seed or whatever you call the it, seed or grain. Mm -hmm. You should try it, Harusha Joe. That, that health food store, do they sell it as, as a flour? Uh, I'm not sure on that. They, I think they sell it as a grain. No, I don't think so. I didn't sell. So. Because you know, you see that thing is bitter and all that. Well, you gotta you gotta rinse it several times. Yeah, but uh, you know, bitterness is good. You know, uh, all uh, today we, they found out all the things that are bitter. Yeah. Actually, have good uh, uh, phytonutrients in it. Well, could and, be. Uh, so, if it's uh, you can make uh, some kind of flour to make bread, because I've, I've been practicing, I've been making bread uh, uh, for quite a while. In fact, during World War Two, I was a baker. Oh. And then, uh, then for a long time, I didn't bake. See? And, and then recently. Uh, when I say recently, uh, uh, it's been about, uh, I, I would say, about six, six, seven years now. I've been making bread every, at least once a week. And uh, I finally found how to make uh, the nice artisanal bread with uh, 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 bread flour. Oh. And uh, I tried all the kind of flour, but now that you've mentioned uh, uh, Quinoa. How you pronounce that word again? Quinoa. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in making bread with that. Oh. But you don't know whether they sell it. No, I, I'm not sure. You just got to ask the health food store. If they don't have it, they might be able to um, bring it in. Oh, I'm sure they, they can bring it uh, in. You know, another question I have. You know that banana drink? Yeah. What do you call uh, what? What do you people in Bolivia call it? What do we call it? In Bolivia, to the banana? The banana drink. Who could the plot on? The banana yeah. juice. Just yes, banana juice. juice. In Spanish, who who the platano? Huh? Who the platano? Who is juice plátano. and platano is uh, banana. banana. Plantain or plantain. And you can use either. Um, you can either use the uh, cooking banana or the eating banana. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, because, you know, we, we, in Hawaii, we like to see exotic kind of stuff, you know. And maybe you guys can bottle that and, uh, and try to test market it at Hilo or someplace. And if you catch fire, man, we can, uh, we, we get, uh, we call that guy uh, the banana king from Hawaii. Uh, Richard Hawk? Uh, uh, yeah, Richard, Richard Hawk. And uh, uh, call, call him that, uh, whatever you folks call him in Bolivia. Yeah, I think he should look and into that because, because uh, he, he, he must have a lot of bananas that uh, he can oh use yeah. for this. And then he can also sell a vinegar. Right. Yeah. A banana vinegar, like you said. Huh? Yeah, my wife said that's a good vinegar. Maybe better than apple cider. I know, they say they like it. Actually, I... But, but anyway, that, uh, with, when I read the real, real book and it say that uh, green called quinoa. Is that quinoa? How do yeah. you pronounce that again? Quinoa. Quinoa? Yeah. Say ki... Uh, uh, I was very ki interested in that, you know, because I was going to call you about it tonight. Yeah. So we, don't, we can't grow in Hawaii. Right. Oh, too bad. Yeah. And, and another thing, uh, you, you know, okay. Hawaii used to be the oil capital of the world, you know, once upon a time, until yeah. they found oil in Pennsylvania. You know that, uh, have you ever, guys in Bolivia, ever tried making alcohol from with that, uh, with that, you know that potato that uh, you demonstrated the last time? The cassava. Uh, yes, cassava. Th they do. Yes. Ca use that and uh, sugar cane. Um, yeah, and they uh, make they make alcohol for drink. Uh, because we may have to use the, uh, uh, alcohol as an additive to right. keep our price of gasoline down. Yeah. Yeah, at the price is going up right now. In, uh, at this farm in Hilo. Yeah. Uh, you, you try to figure out how how to make good uh, 
alcohol to use right to uh, no, to use in our gasoline engines. Eh? Yeah. Okay, Harusha Joe. I think there's another call on the thank line. You. Okay. Okay. Thank okay, you bye. very much. Okay. Uh, the next caller, could you please tell your name and where you're calling from? Hello, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. I have a question about the banana drink. Yeah. Um, you use ripe bananas. And yeah. And you put enough water in the pot to cover the bananas, or what was the ratio of banana double. to water? More, more than double. Um. It doesn't matter. I mean, make sure you use a lot of water uh, and use a big pot and uh, make sure the banana is real ripe. In fact, I, I, I mentioned it's starting to brown already, the skin. And do you strain it afterwards? Yeah, you put, it in a, you put it in a strainer. So you, you strain the pulp afterwards and just retain the liquid? Yeah, yeah, just the liquid. And then you serve it at room temp, or you serve it chilled? Uh, it's better if you chill it. And I have another question about the pineapple juice. Yes? Uh, your wife said that she put uh, cinnamon and cloves in it also when she cooked the pineapple? Yeah. Um, how many clo whole cloves did she put in? How much did you put in? Oh, I just, I, I did so. For Close that one, I put like a... Uh, Four or five club. It was. What about cinnamon? Cinnamon, like a uh, one half stick. One, one, one stick. One stick yeah. about three inches long. Yeah. Yeah. Three inches long. Yes, that one. Yes, that's in the okay. bottle. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. There's another call on the line. Could you please tell your name and where you're calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Hilo. Yes. Dish at the beginning of the show, it was in a like a square pan. I was wondering what that was. Oh, that's a uh, fresh uh, cornbread made out of sweet corn. Oh, it's not uh -huh. not with uh, corn flour now. Uh huh. You, we had to uh, grain. Uh, take the corn out of the cob and then um, put it in a food blender oh. and mix it with uh, what cheese and cheese salt. Salt. Butter. Butter. Yeah. And uh, then put it in the oven. Oh, and is it like sweet or? Yeah, it's, uh, well, you can uh, either have it sweet or, s what, salty, huh? Yes. Whatever way you want it. Oh, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Just I want to mention okay. about the quinoa. In Bolivia, they were oh. making. Talk. Uh, she she want to talk about, uh, my wife want to talk about quinoa. About quinoa. In Bolivia, they're making a dental cream for the teeth. What is that? Pass. <coughs> what do you say? Um, uh, toothpaste. Toothpaste from quinoa. Also, they're making shampoo. Uh, they're using a lot of things using the quinoa. Yeah. Yes. For the chicharron, the pig fat, yeah. How do you prepare that? Is it just deep fried? How do you prepare it? Oh yeah, we bought that one, the belly. So you make squares, like one inch square. Then you put in the, just a little bit of oil, not to stick, yeah? Mm -hmm. Then you put over there a little water and salt and cover for a little while. Well then the, the the fat is coming out, so it's cooking with that little by little. So you have to whisk. Oh, yeah. okay. um, there's another call on the line. Could you please tell your name and where you're calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Papaiko. Um, there is this brown paste in that, uh, I think it was a white container or white right. glass container. Um, what was that? Oh, that's uh, called dulce de leche. It's um, made from condensed milk. Uh -huh. And all I did was um, boil, boil the condensed milk for over an hour. And uh, when you open a can, it, that, that's what you're going to have. Oh, OK. And then what, what do you eat that with? Or you just eat that? Pardon? What do you eat that with? Do you eat that with anything? Yeah, you eat it with bread. Oh, OK, OK. That's why we bought a loaf of bread over here. Oh. <laughs> 
Um, I have another question. Yeah. Um, those corn, those uh, little corn husks. Yeah. Things, what are those called? Uh, they're, they're called umintas. Umintas. There's a, that's like a Bolivian uh, cornbread. Uh, made out of fresh corn, not the corn flour. Corn? Oh, fresh corn. Yeah. Do you have to grind that up? Or? Yeah, you have to grind it up. Take it out from the cob and um, grind it up and add the um, cheese and uh, salt or sugar to it and butter. And uh, you can, that's one way of doing it. The other way is uh, uh, frying it or putting it in the oven. Oh, okay. And those, so the one in the triangle, did, did you uh, bake that in the oven or? Pardon? The triangle one, did you bake that in the oven? How yeah, that's baked, baked in the oven. Oh, okay. okay. And what temperature did you cook that at? Uh, what temperature did you cook it? The oh. umintas. Oh. Three three fifty. Three fifty for how long? Twenty minutes. Three fifty for twenty minutes. Oh, okay, okay. All right, thank you. Hopefully, uh, this show is gonna uh, promote the uh, sale of uh, sweet corn. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. Is there any questions? Uh, did did uh, my wife answer the questions? Any other question? Okay, go ahead. I had a question about the humitas, yeah. the cornbread. W what did you put in the batter? Okay, can we go over it? What did you put in the batter of the humitas? Oh, I put uh, butter. Yeah. Butter. Butter, cheese, mixed with the cheese, and uh, cinnamon, and Clove powder, cinnamon powder. I forgot that. Mention that. Okay. Um, there's a caller on the line. Uh, could you tell your name and uh, where you're calling from? Hi, I'm calling you from Kau. Okay. Um, I was wondering, how, how you guys got the banana juice for me from one? Not supposed to be yellow or something. <laughs> no, when you boil that uh, ripe banana, it'll turn purple. Yeah, that's why the, the audience or the students over here had a hard time guessing what fruit it came from because the yeah. color was completely different from the yellow banana. Okay, yeah, she wants to see this, isn't it? Oh, how does she need banana? Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, I was wondering, the, you know the two corn, the corn dishes at the end? Uh, what's the difference between the two? Uh, what's your question again? You, you know those two corn um, corn dishes at the end? Yeah. Uh, oh, um, the black thing? Are they What's the difference? They're the, they're the, they're the same. The only difference is uh, the way it was uh, cooked. Oh, okay. One was by oven, and the other one was by um, frying frying the the uminta, and the other one, the other one is um, she steamed it. The one with uh, with the a long the long the shape. wrap, and it's kind of long. It's not triangle shape. And she steamed that. So there's different ways of preparing it. Um, did she answer your question about the ingredients? Okay. Okay. Uh, there was another question. Huh? How do you prepare the hominy and how long does that take? Well, this one here was easy because uh, we just opened a can. But um, yeah, but it's good to boil it for uh, 20. 20 minutes. Yeah. 20, 30 minutes. You can add salt or any flavors. Yeah. Also, we, we used to make like, uh, we make the chuño with eggs and onions to eat with anything. Yeah. You're asking uh, preparing the hominy this way and not the way we prepared it uh, in South America. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? I'm going to call on you. <laughs> um, if there's no caller, we'll go again on the plates. I forgot to, OK. Was that a salad you made towards the end? Because uh, I didn't really, ca I didn't really catch what it was. Right now. Uh, there's a caller on the line. Uh, could you tell us your name and uh, um, where are you calling from? Hello. Hi. 
Yes. I'm calling from Hilo. Yes. And um, I wanted to know how, what is the recipe for, um, there's one with, it looks like there's like peas in it. Uh, oh. Like an oval sheet. Can you tell me the recipe for that? That's um, sakta de Sakta de pollo, yeah. How do you say about sakta? S-A-J. Right? J-T-A. Right. Okay, uh, um, she wants to know what's, what you put in. Oh. That one I put, um, first I use chili. Chili, the dry chili, red chili, or yellow ones, you can use it. A cumin, a garlic, onion, a lot of onion, um, ca carrot, and peas. Peas. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you can go with your question now. <coughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> was that some sort of salad that I seen you like preparing? Because I, w I wasn't really paying attention and I was wondering <laughs> what it was. Oh, the salad? Yeah. We yes. Uh that one, the small one. Yeah. This uh I use the red onions. I try to in long way to make fine the thin. Yeah, the yeah. julian slices then. Eh? Yeah. Um I rinse them up in water then to take the bitter. <coughs> then I put in the, I use, usually I use the, what is the glass one is good to use for marinate anything. I put a lemon, garlic, chopped garlic, um, olive oil, then I put the parsley, and tomato. And that salad does well with the uh, sakta. Eh? Yeah, it comes with the sakta. <coughs> but the, this onion can use in any salad, like a pepino. <coughs> that last time you made pepinos, we use with that too. Yes. How long did you marinate the onions for? Oh, I. It's enough, like a two hours or just a minute, it's just looking 20, 30 minutes, or you can keep for tomorrow, still okay. Yeah, <coughs> it's good. Okay, there's a caller on the line. Um, can you tell, tell us your name and uh, where you're ca calling from? This is Harusho Joe again. I'm oh, hi, Harusho. Uh, you ever had that can of uh, uh, condensed milk or whatever milk you said you you put it in hot water without <coughs> opening. Ever explode on you? <laughs> Never. Never? No. Oh, okay. Tonight might be the uh, first and time. Uh, <laughs> and I have another question. The, the thing that you call hum, humitis, eh? Uh, Huminta. They, they say cornfield pie called humitis. Is that the same stuff that you, your wife made in uh, two no. different ways? <coughs> this is fresh corn, Joe. <coughs> yeah, but the, 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 you know the, from the encyclopedia. Yeah. They say that some of the food, and they say cornfield pies called humitas. Oh, wow. is, is that another variation of? Oh. Uh, the <coughs> Could be. What they call pies? Oh, okay. We call it more like bread. Torta. Or oh, torta. Yeah, that oh, well. one we make in the mall. We call torta de choclo. Yeah, you can oh. add it based on. That it has a texture of bread. Uh, the humidity. Uh, I don't know about bread. It's more um, <laughs> because you have soggy, huh? Soggy. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how you s can describe the texture. It's more uh, half and half between, <laughs> I guess, corn and <laughs> bread. <laughs> oh, okay, another uh, dish. They they. They said they mentioned is a uh, meat turnover called saltines or something like that. Oh, that's saltines. Oh, we, uh, don't saltines. we don't have to do it. Yeah. Did your wife make one of that? Make no, no, she didn't make it, and it's not that oh, easy not to today. make. <laughs> but they sell it in uh, oh, La Paz. It, 
But you know what I'm, uh, I'm talking about, though. Yes. Uh, because I was wondering what, what that was, see. Yeah, it's like... Um, it's turnover. Turnover with a lot of meat and pork inside there with a lot of juice. Okay. Uh, the, the dish, dishes that your wife make is very interesting. Yeah, that's why we came on just for. She, she should open up a restaurant so we can we, we can taste her cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Arnold. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's another call on the line. Could you please tell your, us your name and uh, where are you calling from? Hello. Yes. Uh, I'm from Pahoa. Okay. Uh, I was wondering, what's that pancake that you guys made? Uh, which one are you talking about? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think. I think the one you guys are bad frying. Yeah, okay, that's uh, what we call umintas. That's fresh corn, uh, I guess fresh, we call it fresh cornbread. Oh, it's mixed with cheese, uh, what else? Cinnamon uh, clove, we use it like that in Bolivia. Some people use uh, chile maybe. Yeah. Oh, they can put like, a, they make tamales with that too, it's good. Huh? The best tamales you can make with this. <laughs> Mm. Oh, okay. Can you guys use like maple syrup or anything? Use maple syrup? I syrup, no. No, we don't use any. No. Oh, so you, you guys just eat it just like that? Yeah. Oh, it looks good. You can make it sweet with, uh, add sugar to the mix. Mm. That looks better. But it's good if you add it, uh, pineapple juice. It's good too. If, oh. the, if that is dry, yeah. So, it's good. so you can eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner? You what probably can. Yeah, it's it's very delicious. Oh, uh, is it sweet or kind of bland? No, oh, it's more sweet because we're using sweet corn. Oh, okay. Right? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any questions from the audience? Yes? What did you put in the vikase soup? The soup one? Afrikase? Yeah. Afrikase. Yeah, I... I put uh, pork. You had to fry the pork first, huh? Yes, a little bit too. Yes, only in my country they make a big meat, no? They they like to eat, they like they like to see the meat <laughs> or pork, yeah, the pieces. But I make small rice in it. And I put the hanami, hanami. How many? How many? Um, this has the base is uh, the chili and garlic. It's the secret to make this, and the oregano. Oregano, they put it to flavor it. Salt, of course. Yeah, what else? How long do you have to cook it? Just let it oh. boil? Yeah, I, l I did boil that one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But this one, uh, we call in Bolivia fricasse. But the Mexican, they have a more similar dish like that. They're called pozoles. Yeah. Do they use the same uh, hominy? Yes, they use it, the same hominy, but they don't use the seasoning. Without the seasoning, they boil it, and they, they use something red. I don't know what it is, but um, in the side, they put vegetables, like, uh, what is that? Cilantro onions and radish put in the soup, they eat that one with tortilla. Yeah, yeah a lot of people in, uh, uh, over here, they have a misconception that Bolivia is like Mexico. In Mexico, they eat a lot of tortillas. Huh? They eat tortillas for the morning, lunchtime, nighttime. They eat tortillas like rice. We eat rice over here. And, uh, Bolivia, it's not like that. Um, Bolivia, they, they don't have tortillas. If you're in the highlands, you have, uh, you eat either potatoes or, um, um, uh, what do you call that? Um, pasta, no? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're in the um, valley side, you eat, I think you eat a lot of potatoes. But if you're corn. in the tropics, corn. Or corn. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the tro tropics, you eat rice or whatever. Uh, there's another call on the line. Uh, could you tell us your name and uh, where you're calling from? You're on. Hi, I'm calling from Wanamu. Um, what is the hanami 
or that yellow dish? What is it? And what is it? How do you guys make it? Um, <laughs> could you explain? <laughs> You're talking about the uh, the yellow one over there? Yeah, the yeah, the one that's on the screen. Okay, that's just, uh, I think, how many? We put that over there because you, you should eat that with the one right chicharron. next, the chicharron. Because in Bolivia, they serve the how many, a plate of chicharron with the how many. And that's why we prepare the how many, and then you, when you eat the chicharron, you, you, you add that to it. And the hominy that we have over here, we got it from the can. We didn't prepare that hominy. Oh, okay. And um, how do you prepare the chicharron? How do you prepare the chicharron? Just I cook the meat. <laughs> the pork. You have to, oh, the pork. Um, you have to cut a small piece, like one inch. Then put in the pan. Usually it's the best to use the thick pan and cook, uh, let it uh, come out the fat, it will cook with that, fry it little by little. Then at the last minute, you can add it the seasoning you want to. Oh, okay, thank you, it looks oh. really good. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions? Okay, uh, yes? Um, on your guys' farm in Bolivia, what did you guys grow? Um, when we first started, we, we didn't have that much experience, and we wanted we we wanted that farm uh, mainly to um to to uh, it was our way of making a living and uh, also to sustain us and uh, uh, make it like a demonstration experimental farm and continue our work what we were doing as volunteers and uh, so we started off um, we decided to raise chickens and sell the incubator. Uh, in incubated eggs, the eggs for incubation. And uh, later on, and at the meantime, we, were s we wanted to raise pigs, and um, uh, purebred pigs, durocs. And, uh, but that didn't work out because the chickens, um, you, need, you need to have a balanced ration in order for them to produce eggs. And the balanced ration, the things that you need to make a balanced ration was in La Paz. And, and to get the feed from La Paz to, to our area was, was a mess. And then the, the pigs, um, you can produce the corn because we have the land. But the problem with that is the labor. Because we, the first year we put in three, six, more than six acres, eight acres of corn. And if you ever try harvesting corn, it's uh, very labor intensive. So um, I'll continue with that. Um, there's another caller. Uh, could you tell us where you're calling from and um, what's your question? I Yes. I really am enjoying your program tonight. Thank you. I wish your wife would open a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> you have a question? Well, it was very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. No question. Well, anyway. Um, Thank you for the question. <laughs> th yeah. Um, the thing is, um, so the pigs were out because uh, it was too too much labor. So at the end, we ended up um, um, planting um, pasture and uh, raising um, dairy cattle. And uh, we made cheese because you cannot sell the fresh milk because we were far away from the market. So we made um, good cheese and uh, we still have a good price for it. And uh, so that was um, our main income. Plus we um, we had a couple acres of uh, cacao and. Uh, the cacao, but uh, they didn't produce that much cacao because <coughs> there was a disease that came in called the witch's broom disease, and that practically wiped out the production of cacao, and it was hard to control, very labor intensive. So um, we mainly relied on our cheese. But then we had problems at the ending of our years in Bolivia because um, they made a, a, a bridge further up from where we lived. So the main road bypassed our area. So we're sort of cut off from the main road. Uh, there's another call on the line. Uh, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Uh, Arnold, this is going to be my last call. OK. <laughs> You've been talking about pigs and chickens and cows and all that. 
uh, Bolivia is fa famous for their llamas. And then in the mainland, in the USA, they're selling llamas for a very, very expensive prices, you know. How come you just didn't raise llamas? Llamas is for a highland area. You, you wouldn't ever see llamas in our region, in the tropics. Oh, it's, it's like the other green. Uh, it, it's for highland areas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. No wonder. No, you don't. No wonder there's no llamas in Hawaii, too. <laughs> I think there, there was in Kohala, I think. In Kohala. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know if they're still there. They, because I saw on TV, some of the mamas selling for thousand dollars a piece, and uh, and they 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 make nice fur, right? sweaters and all that from the from the wool of the llamas. Oh yes. So yeah, I was I was just curious about no, it's really about for llamas because you never did talk about llamas. Yeah. It's uh, it's on Highland, huh? Right. Uh, okay, I don't. I, I won't bother you anymore. No, no, you're not bothering Thank me. You for <laughs> Thank you. For you're you're helping me out. Right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yeah, about the llamas. Hmm? Yeah. We didn't have it on our Yeah, area. but you want to know about, you want to make search about Bolivia. Otherwise, it's a llama. No? <laughs> Everybody knows Well, there's no need for llamas, but yeah. I think llamas are in the, <coughs> the, high la, the highland region uh, called the Altiplano. And uh, well, in our area, there weren't any. Um, any questions? Um, before we, uh, um, before that, coming to the end, uh, if, and before I forget, uh, I want to thank my wife for um, helping me out because uh, I couldn't have done this without her help. I mean, she worked all day doing this, and I had to go to the university farm and take care of the animals. But uh, I couldn't have done it without her. And yeah, so uh, I want to thank her. And You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, there's another call on the line. Could you tell us your name and uh, where are you calling from? Hi, I'm calling from Kona. Um, I was just wondering, you guys talk a lot of, I just turned the channel um, about like five minutes ago. You guys talking a lot about Bolivia. Um, I was wondering, how do you guys um, know so much about Bolivia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I live down there. I lived down there for 20 years. 20 years? Wow, 20 years. Yeah, I became a Bolivian, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize it. Oh, okay. And so, can I ask you how, why you moved down there? Or? Yeah, I, was, uh, I went down there as a Peace Corps volunteer. Oh. And I met some friends that wanted to continue our work down there, so we bought some land and started farming. Oh, you farmed? Yeah, but things didn't work out because we were all young and and we didn't have a family, we were all single. Oh, and uh, once you have a family, things and your priorities change for a lot of our, my partners. Oh, okay. What so, did you guys farm? Uh, we were farmed in the um, tropics and uh, at the end, we, our farm, at the end we ended up uh, raising dairy cattle and making cheese. Uh -huh. oh, okay. And then you, you, you brought back your beautiful wife there, I see. Yes, yeah, well, I brought back my wife and um, I had uh, two sons and a daughter. Oh. And they were, what, 13, 12, and um, uh, 10 years old when oh. they came back. So actually, we came back like immigrants. So I know I, I really um, feel for the immigrants when they come to a new country, uh, how they feel. Because um, my family, when they came back, they were, um, uh, how do you say, <laughs> we just came with our suitcases and um, they didn't know any English at all. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good, good, good show. Thank you. Thank you. There's another call on the line. Could you please tell your, your name and uh, where you're calling from. Hello? Hello? Hi. I'm Hannah. I'm from, from Wayanai. Oh. Hi. I'm, I'm interested in your drinks, and I turned the channel, and you were just going off of that and asking questions. I would like to know how do you make your drinks and how long do you boil it? What do you add to it? Okay. Um, the first drink is the banana juice, and it's made out of ripe banana. And it's better to get banana that's uh, browning. And just cut it in pieces and uh, just throw it in a big pot with water. 
and keep boiling it until it turns dark purple and then then it's up about through and then all you do is strain it the other drink is uh, pineapple juice and it's made out of the skin of the pineapple when you um, peel the pineapple with a knife and just throw the skin in the pot with water and then just boil it and add um, cinnamon and, and clove. clove and sugar and uh, that's your drink but it's just boil it for an hour or so I think but they, both drinks do well if you um, put it in a refrigerator before you serve cold Okay, so to the banana, you add anything besides just the banana? No. You, d you, can, uh, you can use e either cooking banana or um, um, eating banana. Okay, and uh, cooking or... So if you have a banana tree, in order for that, before the banana gets rotten, you can make banana juice, and you can probably freeze it. Yeah, I love to buy overripe banana and just use it for uh, pancakes and stuff. Yeah. But now I heard about the drink is, and I need a lot of potassium. Right. So, okay, so it doesn't matter how much banana and how much water you put? No, it doesn't really matter. I think that was my question. I thank you. Okay, That's thank you. I love to listen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, any other questions from the audience? Um, I got to go to storytelling. <laughs> um, when I went to Bolivia, I didn't realize that, you know, like the pig that you slaughter, that you can use all the pig, not only the meat. And uh, so we used to raise pig and we used to slaughter our own, and it was an all day affair, a f a family affair. Everybody used to come and help. And um, so we used to make um, chicharron, but the way we used to make it is we used to um, pre uh, make lard, S uh, take out all the fat from the, s the skin of the pig and chop it all up, and you get a big pot and throw all the lard inside, or the, not the lard, but the, the fat, and um, just put a little bit of water, I guess, no? Yeah. And then just mix it all the time and put the fire underneath, you know, and then it's an all-day thing till the night you're doing it. And slowly you see all the, the, the lard coming up, this liquid, just like water. And um, also, you, you know, the, the intestine, the stomach, everything, you wash it out and then you chop it up too. And you can make it just like chicharron with that. You just throw it into and then just cook it. It tastes real good. And, um, with banana and cassava. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, my wife sometimes, you know, she likes to, she has a craving for um, green banana. And I, oh, I, to me, I had a hard time eating green banana. <laughs> but certain people in certain areas like South Pacific, they like to eat green bananas. And even her, uh, she likes to eat green banana sometimes, so I have to go find green banana for her. But uh, green banana does well with pork. And, uh, and so we used to, uh, make our own lard with that and uh, and but it was an all day affair I mean Pork till night and uh, it was very tiring okay uh, we're just about through so um, I want to thank uh, my wife again for helping me out because I couldn't have done it without her help uh, I didn't realize it was so much work <laughs> I don't think I'll do it again <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank everybody um, for coming and uh I don't know who's going to come on next week. Do you know? Uh, oh, I, uh, according to my students so over here, they said the Japanese Chamber of, Com Chamber of Commerce. Hopefully, they'll be on because uh, I won't be on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you.